So guys, today I'm going to be talking about knife steels. So in this whole kind of series of talking on bushcrafting knives and my experience with bushcrafting knives, we've already hit upon why I like smaller knives and why I think Scandi grinds are the best, at least for me. But today I'm going to be talking about steels. And steels for knives are very complicated. It's a very complicated situation because there's also other factors such as heat treat and uh, you know overall grind that can help preserve or hinder a particular steel's performance. Just like with Scandi grinds, if you try and use a, just take a straight Scandi grind and make it from CPM S30V, you'll find that that edge tends to chip out because of the particular steel construction. That doesn't mean that CPM S30V is a bad steel, it just means in that particular grind, it is actually hindered. So that, that out of the way, you know, or that complicated situation being noted, you just have to factor that with some steels, you know, it's not a one size fits all. It's not that CPM S30V, you know, just works for everything and it's just a great steel all around. But in particular applications, it can be very well done. Uh, but in particular, this video is why I think 5160 is the best steel out there for bushcrafting. Now, admittedly, I don't really think that 5160 is the best steel for edge retention or stainlessness or many other factors, but there's a lot of reasons why I like 5160 and the reason why it is my number one choice. So let's get into that. So the primary reason I like 5160 is that there are, there are a few reasons I really like 5160. The first really being its availability and its price. Now, one of the large uh, problems with many steels that are very nice, such as CPM3V, which I'm going to get to in a little bit, are that with CPM3V, you're going to have a really hard time finding any knives in CPM3V for under $200. Whereas with 5160, I was actually able to find consistently, you know, many knives in that steel for under $100. They were still high, like $80, $90, but still they were under $100. And you can find even better ones for low hundred dollars. One that I really love, and you may eventually see come into the rotation, is the Buck Punk. It, uses 5160 and I really love that knife. It's very awesome. If you guys are looking for a great intermediate knife, uh, the Buck Punk would be a great option. If you're looking for a larger or like a, a really intermediate sized knife for intermediate skilled bushcrafters, the Buck Punk is a great knife. Not trying to sell it, not paid to say that. I just particularly like that knife. But anyways, 5160, like I was saying, offers a great value. And for me, when I personally look at knives, I am very concerned about value because, you know, it's great and fine and awesome if a knife uses perfect steel that has everything great about it. But if the knife is five or $600, no one's really gonna be able to get it. So, you know, I don't wanna do a video just explaining about how much I love CPM3V if it's largely unattainable for you you guys. So that's why I love 5160 because it's not only a great steel and has many awesome properties such as it being a spring steel so that's very very shock resistant uh, but it also has excellent edge retention and reasonably good um, stainlessness and once again you can find it in many different knives for under a hundred dollars. So that's why 5160 or that's one of the reasons why 5160 is one of my favorites. Like I said, it has very good stainless properties, or pretty good, it's not great, but pretty good stainless properties being considered. It has excellent uh, shock properties because like I said, it's a spring steel, so it is designed to take shock. So you can baton 5160 knives pretty much through rocks and they don't care. And um, another great thing is their edge retention is very good. I'd say it's a little bit above 1095 and one of the great attributes it has like 1095 is it takes a razor edge very easy. It's very easy to rehone. So it is an overall awesome steel and really the largest thing that I find neat about it is just how overlooked the steel is. As far as knives go, many knife makers use 1095, D2, uh, A2. 
uh, many of these different steels. And those are great steels, don't get me wrong, I've used all of those, but <clears throat> I feel like 5160 is highly overlooked, especially for the value it offers. Uh, <clears throat> so that is my number one steel, and once again, if you're curious, I, I think I'll try and link a Blade HQ link to my filters. I'm not sure if I can set it up. I'll see if I can set it up to filter just 5160 knives so I, you guys can get some ideas on knives. If you are curious, Ontario Knife Company makes a lot of knives in 5160, and once again, they're all sub $100, still like $90, $80, $70, but very awesome. That is 5160. This one, by the way, the Heli Egan in its triple layer all uh, heli knives that ha use triple layer laminates. The core of them is 5160 for those who don't know. Uh, so that is the particular knife I have on the table that uses 5160 as its actual cutting edge. But it is a laminate, it's laminate between two 300 series stainless pieces to keep its rust resistance pretty much uh, perfect because that knife will not rust really except for on its very cutting edge. So the next steel that I really love, and it's probably in all honesty my top steel in my own consideration because one, I have it, and two, I can afford it, is CPM3V. Now it's undoubtable that CPM3V is really one of the best bushcraft steels out there with one clause, and that is if you can afford it. Like I said, many knives that use utilize CPM3V are over $200. So if you can't afford that, or if you don't want to spend that much money on a knife, then CPM3V is pretty much unattainable for you. So if you can though, however, get it, CPM3V is a fantastic steel. I rave about it pretty much almost as much as I rave about this Bushcrafter. Uh, it is a great steel. It holds an edge forever. It is not as shock resistant as 5160. I have, uh, I think, just one, but I do have one microchip in this steel or this piece of steel, this edge, where I just batoned it straight through a knot in birch just to see its absolute shock resistance. I made sure it batoned straight through a knot in birch wood, which I understand birch isn't the hardest wood, but it's still pretty hard, and it did get a microchip from that. So it is not the most uh, shock resistant steel, but as far as edge retention and wear resistance goes, it is very, very good. It's also uh, one of the better steels, especially of the CPM lineup that is stainless, or uh, for stainlessness. I know uh, CPM S30V beats it, but this one's like right next to it in stainlessness. It's very, very hard to rust. I have never had it rust. In fact, one day, more out of laziness, I uh, skinned an animal with it and left blood on the actual steel and put it, sheathed it back with the blood and totally forgot that I had left blood on it. And I pulled out the other day and cleaned off all the blood and there was not a speck of rust from the blood. So that was pretty awesome. And once again, shows that CPM3V is very stainless. So aside from those two steels, my next favorite really has to be Nylox slash D2. I've used quite a bit of Nylox and D2 knives. And while they do rust almost as easy as 1095, what I do prefer is their superior edge retention. They do have a very good edge retention and pretty good shock resistance uh, from my findings. And overall, D2 is another one of those steels that like 5160, it's beginning to start, or D2 is now beginning to start to become more of a value option steel, especially as there becomes more CPM steels. Uh, D2 is starting to fall in price, which is really good because you can get a lot of nice knives with D2 and get a good amount of edge retention. And really D2 reminds me of a essential next step up from 1095. However, I do want to know it is a little bit harder to sharpen. Uh, so it it is, that is kind of its disadvantage, but it is sharpenable pretty easily in my opinion. So that's D2 slash Nylox. Nylox is the essentially European version, and that this is Nylox here, but it's essentially the European version of D2. It's made by Bowler, the same people who make M390. So uh, that is the Nylox steel. It's not a super common steel to see over here in America, 
but it is essentially like D2. So then my fourth steel is 1095. The reason why this is my fourth steel is it is a very value option and you can find knives well under $100 with 1095. My biggest disadvantage with 1095 is since there is so much carbon in it, it rusts so easily. I mean, if you get any water on this and leave it there for even like 10 minutes, it will rust. This knife just rusts, or not this one in particular, or all of them in particular, but all 1095 knives, they just rust extremely easy, and it can be a real annoying thing. In fact, it rusts so easy that when I started to break it out to do the uh, Mora versus the World, it actually rusts on me because I had forgot. I'm so used to working with things like CPM3V and Nylox that are, you know, just a little bit better about rust that I forgot just how easy these things rust. So this thing actually rusted up on me as like, dang, I mean, not severely, but you know, it just helped re-solidify that whole fact in my mind that, you know, if you just had to be super cautious with 1095 because they rust extremely easy. So that's the biggest disadvantage about them. Once again, they hold an edge. Uh, 1095 is very picky. How you heat treat it is how well it will hold its edge. But generally, for the most part, there's very good uh, heat treating out there nowadays. So most hold their edges pretty well. And resharpenability is very easy on them. 1095 will take a razor's edge very fast. That is one of my favorite things about it. And once again, because it has so much carbon in it, carbon's a very pliable thing. So it resharpens very easy. Whereas chromium, which is largely seen in these stainless knives, uh, it does not. It does not like to bend. It does not like to be reformed very easily. So that's one of the reasons why stainless steel or CPM steels can be harder to sharpen um, when you need to sharpen them. So anyways, guys, that's pretty much my top four steels. I really don't have a whole lot of favorite steels. Uh, the rest of it all kind of like after that falls into like a big just slush, if you will, where I don't really particularly mind these types of Sandvik steels. This is like a 14C something like C28N or something like that. I would have to go recheck. But this is a Sandvik steel, steel and I've been reasonably happy with it. Uh, no real complaints about it. Once again, it's not a stellar performer um, like a, like 5160 or D2 or CPM3V or CPMS30V. Uh, it's just, you know, a good steel is all it is. So for me, at least, uh, those are my top four steels, though. Hopefully this helps with you guys uh, when you're looking to buy your next knives. Uh, or what kind of steels hopefully this helps narrow it down for you guys so that you know you know what steels to get uh, and anyways guys don't forget to comment like share subscribe and share what your thoughts are on steel i'd be really curious to know what you guys think of stainless steel or not stainless steel but uh, just steels in general what are your top four picks you know uh oh, do you guys think i'm wrong about 5160 or just what have you with that Anyways, guys, that's it for now, and I'm out.